Hey y'all, this is Alicia Costanza and welcome back to my channel. It is October 1st, which is my birthday. And I realized I have not updated you guys. Then I haven't updated you guys on what I've been reading in a really long time. Four months, to be exact. Like, I've been giving you my TBRs, but I haven't been telling you if I've actually been reading this shit or not. So, I thought I'd give you a quick rundown. June, July, August. And a little bit more in depth of September before we get, you know, through October and I just get farther behind. So, I'm going to go back to past me because I did do a little bit of a wrap up in August for June and July and then we'll get into some August stats. I'd like to talk about some of my favorites from the last quarter and my September reads. So, let's go see past Alicia right now. Okay, so in June... I read how many books? Five, six, seven, eight. I read nine, nine and a half, nine books. Not as many as I had planned to read, but that's okay. I did read, let's talk about some totals first. Pages read. I read 2,978 pages. I listened to 50 hours, 55 minutes, and three seconds of audiobooks, which equates to around two days, two hours, 55 minutes. And of course, those three seconds. Of the books that I read, even my did not finish, my, my DNFs, I had four romances, one dystopia, one thriller, and three fantasies. Five of them were young adult. Four of them were adult. I DNF'd one. I gave two three stars. I gave five four stars. And I gave one five star. Of those books, again, four of them were ebooks. Two of them were physical copies, although I did have a physical copy of one, even though I listened to it on audiobook. And three of them were audiobooks. Six of them were traditionally published, two were self-published, and one was independently published. Sarah Cannon, you rock. She's doing a How to Write Your Series at the moment, by the way, which I'll link below, which is totally, you should totally watch it. I love that kind of advice. I don't give that kind of advice very often because that's what I do for my job. So let's get on to July. My July pages read. I read 2,853 pages and I listened to 47 hours, 10 minutes and 33 seconds. One day, 23 hours, 10 minutes, 33 seconds. Of what I read, 10 books, 11 books, we'll call the 11 because I'm moving over the one from last month that I started, or June. Of the 11 books, five of them were romance, one was a dystopia, two were fantasy, one was a horror, one was a thriller, and one was a sci-fi. Four of the 11 were adult, and seven out of the 11 were young adults. You can see a trend here. I like young adults. I had no five stars in July. I did have seven four stars in July, however. Three, or two three stars, one two star and one DNF. Of the eleven books, five of them were ebook. One and a half of them were physical books because I listened to it even though I had the book. And six of them were audiobooks. Nine of them were traditionally published and two were self-published. Hint, the one that I DNF'd was not self-published. Wait, did I only write down the one that I, I didn't finish two? Because I also did not finish Oh my gosh, did I really not write that down? How terrible of me. Well last month I also didn't finish reading The Girl Who Drank the Moon. It was my other DNF. It didn't happen. Did. Okay, well, let's talk August. I'm going to show you guys my little stats page because I'm a dork and I do a stats page. So in August, pages read 3,578. I feel like this keeps going up each month, which makes me extremely happy. So minutes listened. Now that's including the, the books that I listened to. So like that's the... culmination of all the work, of all the pages. I think that's the right word. Minutes listened. I listened to 66 hours, 24 minutes and 57 seconds, which equates to two days, 18 hours, 24 minutes and 57 seconds. Long, it's a long time. I read three fantasy or paranormal, three romance or erotica, two sci-fis and two mysteries. And my cat's gonna scream because every time I record he screams. I'm, I'm done with, I'm done with fighting him about it. I read six adult in four young adult in August. So that's 10 books total, not that bad. Three of them were five stars, three of them were four stars, and four of them were three stars. Three of them were also ebooks, one physical book off my TBR, and six audiobooks. You can tell I'm leaning into audiobooks. And then nine of them were traditionally published, and one of them was self published, none of them were indie published. In my 
I could run down and give you like which ones all these were, but that's a, a lot of books I've read in the last four months. So let me give you some highlights. So let's talk about June highlights. One, th the top two books from June. Of the, how many books did I read in June? I read nine books in June, and my top two were Black Echo by Michael Connelly, which is the Bosch series. Of course, it was the first one of the Bosch series, so I know I did a reading vlog with it, and I've talked about it a little bit. I've definitely talked about it in my TBRs because I keep reading the next one. I'm on book four currently, but Black Echo, Michael Connelly, definitely got me. And then Take a Chance on Me. Oh, who? I'm gonna, I'm gonna put... Let's put the cover up right over here. This was part of a 10 chapter challenge and I absolutely loved the tension in it. And I do know that I talked about it a little bit at some point, whether that ever made it to YouTube, to you guys or not, but it was a Christian novella, really. And I like the idea of the second chances, even though the first chance wasn't really a good chance, but it was more about trust in relationships rather than like sexual tension. I really enjoyed the character buildup in, within the plot. So those are my two from June. My top three are from July. How many books did I read in July? I read 11 books in July and top three, Praying for Rain, which was a freebie that I got. And I think I did, I also did it as part of a 10 chapter challenge. This is B.B. Easton, I do remember her name. And it was a post-apocalyptic story that reminded me of Bradbury and I do know that I've talked about it in a previous video. I'll link it down below and in a card or something, but definitely still remember this story. want to continue reading this story. I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. The second in this month would be, of course, Black Ice by Michael Connelly, which is book two in the Bosch series. Loving Bosch. Love Bosch. Oh my gosh. I'm not gonna like gush about it too terribly much, I hope. Um, and then my third favorite from July was Red Glove by Holly Black, which is the second in the Curse Worker series. And I just love Holly Black, first of all. Having Jesse, oh, Jesse something. Damn it. Eisenberg? Jesse Eisenberg reads it. Uh, famous actor. <laughs> Here's a picture of his face right here. It just completed the character for me. And oh, I get so mad. I get so mad and I love that Holly can make me so mad all the time. So yes, definitely was a five-star beat for me in July. So there's my top three from July. August, my, let's see, my, I kind of have four, I guess that Eve is out since I only had two in June, but I again read, how many books did I read? Read 10. I already told you about that because I just broke down the stats for it. And of my five stars, I did have again three five stars. The first was Dirty Billionaire by Megan March. She's an, a new favorite author so far. I think I read the first series. I read the first and the second series of hers. I'm looking forward to reading the next one. I do see some leaned on tropes, but I don't really have a problem with that because I have leaned on tropes too that I write with. Like fighting and training are two of my favorite things to write beyond sex and all, all of those things are in most of my stories. So, most. I do have a young adult that there's no sex in. So, yeah, I can, I can go without, just so that we all know this. Dirty Billionaire is about a, actually a young starlet who won a singing competition and is trying to make it as a country star and she, her contract sucks and she's just kind of rebelling a little bit and goes to have a one night stand no names exchange. It's a billionaire and he's so taken with her when she disappeared the next morning without any, like, no contact information, nothing, that he puts out a announcement, search for her, meet me at this time and we'll get married and they get married. And then it's just this whole, like, whirlwind for three, three books. And there's a lot of nice kinky sex in it. I like the character growth in it. I read the rest of the series, so, which we'll talk about because I read them in September. But definitely a highlight for August. I believe I gave it 4.5 or 5 stars. It was pretty good. Uh, there were some writing issues that I had with a lot of chuckling and dialogue tags and a few repetitive things, but overall, the story was, I was into it. I was into it. My second 5 star, which I did a review video on, was Pride, Prejudice, and Other Flavors by Snelly Deev. And, y'all, yeah, I am itching to reread this thing. I loved it so much. I love retellings of Pride and Prejudice. I, and I'm a sucker for it and she did such a good job. She did such a good job. If you, if that's, if this is the only book that you pick up for my recommendations, please pick it up. It is an amazing, I love the audiobook. 
I imagine I'd love reading it just the same. And here's my kitty. Hi, Frodo. Has got to investigate while I record because he's a turd nugget. My other five star was Thirst. Of course it was because it was a reread and I knew I loved it already. I enjoyed reading book two and three, three mostly, because I've forgotten a lot of things that happened. I still haven't gone to the second compendium yet because I don't know what's wrong with me. I really don't. Maybe I can get to it in October even though I have a pretty big list of books. Most of them are audiobooks, so my anthology is published, so I don't have that. I'm 132 thousand words into my new book so like I'm getting there I don't know maybe maybe it, it's a spooky season so maybe but that's neither here nor there that's not why we're here right now and my other one that I really want to mention was Solus by Gal Carriger I read a previous series of hers I loved it's the same world I loved the Scottish werewolf and the soulless woman. Okay, so steampunk universe. Werewolves and vampires have legal standing in society and of course because this is steampunk this is like 18th, 19th century England. I think late 18th century England? Maybe? 19th century, 1800s, there we go. And so there's all this propriety and stuff and we have a spinster who doesn't have a soul which means that she kind of like undoes the paranormal powers of these creatures like she touches the wolf and he becomes a human touches a vampire and he becomes a human and it opens with her almost being bitten by a new vampire that should have been warned but wasn't and it leads down this complete mammoth like conspiracy that was excellent i wish my library had the next four, three books in audiobooks i listen to it and i love listening to it they don't i've read obviously her stuff before so i'm gonna have to just read her ebooks and i'm like y'all i can't wait to get back into this series it's gonna be good for the cold weather i'll just well it's a little spicy i'll put it that way but definitely i think i gave it 4.5 stars which is the only reason why it wasn't wasn't my five star but it was still it's funny sometimes my 4.5s link up to the five and sometimes they link down to the four and it really just depends on how I feel about the book more than the merits of the book whether I give it the up or the down like do I feel like I want to bump it up because I thought it was that good it just had a few mistakes or do I want to bump it down because it really had some some things that needed that made it not deserving of the five star I don't know I don't know what in me decides those things um I did want to highlight the fact that I also read The Assassin's Apprentice or listened to it I don't think I could have gotten through it if it wasn't for the audiobook because epic fantasy is just like it's so long and drawn out and people talk about it being slow to start with and I can't really get through the slow bits. I want stuff to happen and for you to reveal things to me through action and intersperse all of the world building within the action. So that's why epic fantasy is like eh for me. Which is why it was like a three three and a half star. But I really liked the action when we got to it, and I liked the characters and stuff. I did finish my Sherlock Holmes, both of them, which made me really excited. And I also randomly read 172 Hours on the Moon, which I'd seen. Christopher Pike did a book like that called uh, Season the Passage, so... And it was better done. If you if you like that kind of thing, space, vampires, mythology, and whatnot, read the Season the Passage by Christopher Pike instead. Sorry. He did it better. Alright, let's talk about September in a little bit more depth. And I've started doing my book stats so I don't have to do so much research at the end of the month. And I got to my second page and all my stats are down here. Let us talk about September. I actually did pretty well in September, although I didn't get everything on my list read. I guess I tracked. So, pages read, prepared for this one. 4,849 pages read. Holy shit. And I think that's 14? I have 14 books? 15 books. 14 14 books this month. Minutes listened. 96 hours, 30 minutes, and 5 seconds. That is equivalent to 4 days, 0 hours, 30 minutes, and 5 seconds. I read a lot of audiobooks. I'm going to read a lot of audiobooks next month, too. Most of my books were audiobooks for that. I read 4 sci-fi, 4 romance or erotica, 2 mystery thrillers, 3 fantasy, and 1 horror. 6 of these were adult, and 8 of them were young adult. I read four ebooks, one physical book, and ten audiobooks. And you notice that's 15. That's because one of my audiobooks I also had physically on my TBR. So I counted it twice. Eleven of them, eleven of them were traditionally published. Three of them were self-published. None of them were indie published. So my five stars. How many five stars do I have? Wow. Seven five stars? Really, Alicia? You were that nice? Wow. Okay. Okay. So I finished out Black Heart 
by Holly Black, which is the third and final in the Curse Worker series, because one of my goals is to finish the series this month, or this year. I loved it. I loved the prop that she used throughout, finished up the end of the series, and I'm just very, I'm very happy with how it turned out. So, yes. Yes. Can't really say much about it without giving spoilers, so just, just know yes. Still a favorite author. I, I just broke my hair and my glasses. I do that all the time. I also read or listened to Stars Above by Marissa Meyer, which was just the short story collection that goes along with the Lunar Chronicle series. I really enjoyed all the different uh, perspectives that I got from it. I had read the wolf one before and I really liked the ending. That was nice. It was sweet. She's a master. I have like no. I want to read other things that she writes. I don't know if she's written anything else. I think Heartless is one of them, but I I just I need I need to look more into Marissa Meyer. Then I read The Concrete Blonde by Michael Connelly, which was another five star, four point five five star. His writing style and stuff five star. The lack of commas makes it a four point five star, and that's really in the he didn't say anything, which I'm getting more used to, and I don't know if I like that I'm getting more used to it, but. Definitely five star book three in the Bosch series. Still love him. Again, I'm almost on my book four, which I'm counting in this wrap up, by the way, just so we understand each other. Moon Called by Patric Patricia Briggs, which is a series that my husband used to read and he was listening to parts of me and go, oh, I know where you are. Another vampire, werewolf, coyote, fox type of like shapeshifter paranormal there's some romance triangly things in it there's lots of action and blood there's magic there's politics from the vampires and the werewolves and it is pretty much like my genre paranormal fantasy romance like that is urban fantasy i love it and it hit all the things that i wanted it to hit without being too repetitive of other things that i've read before and i'm going to continue the series so yes good good job i liked it miss briggs then I read The Host by Stephanie Meyer. My book's over there, and that's my one physical book that I had. And y'all, I was expecting, it was a five-star prediction. At the same time, I was scared. I'd, I'd put it off for so long, and remembering how I felt with Twilight, I was surprised by how much I liked it. Seriously, like, I kept going, why is this so long? Why are we doing this? And then it just kept building and building and building, and I was totally prepared for it to break my heart or give me a happy ending, and it did. And I didn't really tell you which one of those it gave me, but just know that it met my expectations. I and mean, it could have gone the other way and still met my expectations because she did a really good job preparing me for either one of them. And I'm just, I liked it. I liked it a lot. It was very interesting to think about humanity in the perspective that she put us in. And my husband and I are going to watch the movie together. So I'm going to look forward to that. Maybe we can do that today for my birthday. And my last five star is The Last Coyote, which is the current Bosch book that I am in the middle of and hopefully going to finish today or tomorrow. I still count it on September because I've read most of it. I've spent more time with it in September than I did in October. So hit me up if you think that I'm wrong with that. But uh, that's how I'm doing things right now. My four stars. Ruthless King by Megan March was, I think, 4.5 stars because there were a few things I was like, mm. and again, the repeated tropes, but I am interested. The way she ended that book. She's the master at the cliffhanger in the middle of a, a trilogy. Like, I need to read the next one. I wish the next one was on audiobook too, but it's not, but I have it at my library, so I'm going to get it. I'm going to read it before the end of the year, most likely. Like, Ruthless King, by the way, was one that I read as a part of my 10 chapter series as well. The first couple chapters about a beer maker whose husband died and took out a loan from a very notorious bad guy in New Orleans and he wants the debt paid with her. So you can imagine how that's going to go. She's a feisty redhead and that's kind of what he's counting on is he's bored with how people cow to him and they have a spark and it's interesting. I also read Four, which was a collection of short stories about, of course, Four from the Divergent series, Veronica Roth, and I loved his perspective. Like, yes, it'd been so long since I read these books. I watched the movie pretty regularly actually the first one not the second or the third one the second one and the third one changed too much from the books for me to like it and i know a lot of people had issues with the third book i really didn't i liked it i need to reread that series i think i'm gonna do that on my list for uh, 2021 because four was good four was pretty good i read 30 together 
Dirty Pleasures. Uh, Dirty Pleasures was 5 and Dirty Together was 4.5. This was finishing up the Dirty Billionaire series that I read the month previous in August. I really liked the way it wrapped up and everything. The only reason that the third book got less was because there wasn't as much sex and I know that sounds really weird but when you have it consistently in the first two books and only like the first, I think, third or half of the book had any kind of real sex in it that, and then it dropped off, uh, that I wanted more. That's all. That was my only real qualm with it, which sounds silly, but that, it, that's what I expected, so, and I didn't get it. And randomly, I read Three Dark Crowns and liked it a lot. Was surprised that I liked it a lot. I didn't know, I still don't know who to root for. Well, there's so many twists and turns and surprised by the epic fantasiness of it because it was like the only real world building we got was in the repetition of knowing where we were given the perspective and I liked it that way because it allowed us to shift between perspectives really well and build at the same time without needing too much front heavy world building like most epic fantasy uses and of course she made me really really mad i wanted to punch some people in the face which is a good reaction to get out of me honestly it sounds negative but it's totally a good reaction to get out of me because it make me feel something rather than me just going hmm okay which is something that like the assassin's apprentice did to me occasionally because of the excessive world building but i liked it and is it Ken Dare, the author of that? I'm sorry, I don't I don't know offhand. Here's the here's the cover. I have three more books. Well, five more books technically, but three more books that I actually read. So my three three stars was Air by Kira Cass. I don't know I don't like the protagonist. I don't know how I feel about it. I am gonna read the next one because I'd like to finish out the series. So but it the daughters of the selection series uh, lovers and I see a lot of potential for growth which is going to keep me with it in romance and I don't know what to root for in this book either so I mean I have a few that I'm rooting for is what I mean. I also read Legend by Marie Lu and this was a another three I think this was a 3.5 instead of a three but it was it wasn't bad it was just all the things I expected and had I read it during the time when it was new I probably wouldn't have as much like qualms with it as I do now or I've been so ho-hum about it but I had all the dystopian tropes and why romance and pretty nail on the head a uh, commentary on our society so yeah I liked it I liked the connections it made but it was it wasn't anything different than I'd, I'd read before so 3.5 by the and if that doesn't like tell you what it's about it's essentially one kid is a legend for disrupting and stealing from society he's notorious and he's never been caught and a girl who is also a prodigy goes after him after her brother dies so and of course this leads to police corruption and them working together and yada 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 i don't know if i'll continue the series or not i haven't decided yet and the last one that i finished was wilder girls by rory power and 3.5 stars i think i gave it it was enjoyable um it was a bit slow at times i did like a lot of the reveals at the end People talked about this being hella gay and I was expecting it to be hella gay, but it wasn't hella gay, guys. It, there was some female romance, female female romance, there was some female male romance, and a lot of death, which I liked, but mostly just corruption. So I liked the environmentalism and food industry stuff that I liked to rant about was in there. So which forgave me some of the obvious character like eh mess that happened in it too. And I DNF'd two books, both of which I'd like to get back to just so that we're clear on this, but I just now wasn't wasn't the mood for it. Uh, the first was Parable of the Talents, which I talked about. I DNF'd it before. I think I would do better with the audiobook, honestly, because a lot of this is rather versy writing and it's journaling and I have a hard time reading that sometimes and I think that's just it. Like I couldn't get back into the book. Maybe I really need to reread the first one to get back into it. I don't, I don't really know. I just, I just couldn't, I just, like I just couldn't focus on it and I had other things to do. So I put it off again. And the same thing happened when I started Truth Witch by Susan Denard. I feel like I should like it, but a lot of the traditional epic fantasy things about it, I'm just like, eh. And I had my Michael Connelly book waiting for me and I'd rather read that. So I just kind of went, all right, I'm going to read this instead. And I'll try it again. It is one of my books on my 20 for 2020 list. So I do want to get back to it and actually finish reading it. 
So yeah, y'all, I read a lot of books, and uh, we'll see how I do in October. I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.